Hi, everyone. I'm Madison Vane here with Clean Bandit, Grace and Jack from the band. Um, we're going to chat about, obviously, the new album and tour. But first, how are you guys? Welcome to New York. Thank, Thank you. you. We're really good. We just come from Miami, actually. So you're getting a lot of good weather right now. Yeah, it was so nice. It's so nice down there. Um, so let's start with just going back to 2014. Obviously, Rather Be was kind of the hit that never stopped going. Um, when you think back now to when you guys wrote it, do you remember thinking we have something special on our hands? This is something we definitely want to like put forward into the world. I think, yeah, we, I mean, we were playing it live for maybe six months to a year before we actually made the studio version, the, the, the final recording. Right. And in festivals and gigs and stuff, we kind of realized more than any other songs that we were playing at the time, like this one, people like this one, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that gave us a kind of an idea that it might be. The one to go with. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously you worked with Jess Glenn for that one and you worked with her on another song on that album, New Eyes. What is it like in that partnership? What works so well there? I think she's just got such a kind of, um, there's like a, a very kind of raw power to her voice, but also a vulnerability as well, that, that's just that beneath the surface. Um, I think that really suits that kind of, that, the, the, the kind of message of Rather Be and the, the way that's kind of, it's got a similar thing in that, in that um, there's a kind of melancholy to the, to the music, but, right. but a, a, a kind of strength and power to the, to the, to the meaning, to the lyrics. I love that. Um, the song obviously also won a Grammy the next year in 2015. Since then, have you been feeling a lot of pressure to try and match that success? Or is it, you know, does it weigh on you in any way? Not really, no. <laughs> um, Very convincing. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> there hasn't really been a pressure, but, like, it's quite addictive winning Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have won, you won them all. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, we, we would love to, like, we hope that our, we, we have more songs that sure. reach a lot of people in the way that Rather Be did. Right. And, yeah, it's kind of exciting. It was just so surreal when that happened, so unexpected. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think people expect to win Grammys on their first albums. No. <laughs> but it's nice. Um, obviously, that year, your debut album, we just talked a little bit about, New Eyes came out. And it was obviously this very unique blend of classic music with electronic music. Like, what is sort of the through current between those two genres that becomes like such a seamless blend for you guys? Like, what is the commonality between those two? Well, I think all Western music kind of comes from classical music mm -hmm. anyway. So, like, a lot of the chord progressions that you hear in right. pop music are the same that you would hear in Mozart or even Bach. Right. Um, so... For us, we don't really think of classical music as a separate thing from pop music. It's all like the same thing. And okay. I guess Mozart's music was the pop music of his That's time. That's true. <laughs> right. um, but for us, we just started mixing it mainly because we were friends. And I was doing, I've kind of played classical music my whole life. And that's what I was doing. And Jack, we were living together and he was at the time experimenting with electronic music and we mm -hmm. just thought let's bang them together <laughs> see what happens <laughs> um, yeah jack obviously your brother is also in the band luke yeah. had you guys been working on music groups your whole lives or when did it become apparent that you wanted to pursue music as a career yeah we i mean we've been jamming together for, since we were kids he's i think there's, there's six years between us but and he um he got an electronic drum kit for his i think I don't know what birthday it was, but at that point, I was kind of like, come on, join the band. Right. Yeah. But you before that, really sorry, I was just going to no, go say, ahead. before that, um, Jack and Luke have both been playing in rock bands okay. and um, like acoustic uh, drums and um, Jack plays bass guitar and also jazz saxophone. So they had a kind of history in completely different kinds of music right. again. So when you guys all decided to become a band, like what was the conversation where you said, let's pursue this, let's come up with a name, let's start working on an album? It was, it's quite a long story. It's kind of been quite an evolving group. It started off more as a kind of collective and has gradually kind of distilled. Do you want to explain that, what that sort of means? Because I guess you guys don't have a vocalist, so you worked with a yeah. collective, correct? Yeah, we, um, 
to, to begin with, it was the, the quartet and me and uh, a vocalist called Love Sega, who's, um, who we met at Cambridge, and he was studying uh, chemical engineering at Cambridge. And he was kind of like the front man, he was the, the singer. But then he kind of had um, uh, other kind of responsibilities. He had to get back into studying because he was de designing these crazy systems with lasers okay. like, and, and doing mad stuff. Um, so we started working with other singers. And at that point, we kind of realized we couldn't find anyone who was as good as Seg, one person. Right. So we, we never found the one kind of singer th to think, oh, this is going to be the, the singer. So we kept working with lots of different people, and gradually that just became the, the status quo, and we became a kind of instrumental group working with many different vocalists. Is anybody in touch with him? Like, he's got to be kicking himself no, a little no, bit. No, no, the cool thing is we're now working with him again. He's here in, okay. New, he's here in New York. He's going to be playing with us tonight. Amazing. Yeah. Great. You guys are playing tonight at Irving Plaza. You guys yeah. are kicking off a tour the U.S. Yeah. stateside. That's yeah. awesome for him. Yeah. He gets yeah. to do both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's always remained a big part of, of the collective, um, but it, he just couldn't be the only singer because, right. yeah, when we were at university, he just decided to do this doctorate and it took over. So selfish of him. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, something interesting I remember reading is you guys said in the U.S. you seem to be viewed as a little bit more experimental, a little bit more left of center, whereas back in the U.K. you get treated like a normal pop band. Um, what do you think the difference is in the reading of your music then? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I feel like here we meet more, more fans after shows and stuff that have really got into some of the less known tracks on the album and some of the more kind of esoteric things that we've put out. Like in Miami, we, we met a load of fans after the show and they were kind of saying, come on, we need more stuff like from the beginning. Right. <laughs> um, uh, and I guess in the UK, it feels like there's more of a emphasis on the pop, the pop side, which we love all of it. We know we like, love doing both. It kind of keeping kind of toes in both sure. pools. Um, what is kind of the process inside the band? Like, where does a song start? Does one person usually write and then bring it to everybody? Is it always done collaboratively, or how does it kind of all work out? Um, well, Jack normally has the initial ideas and is the principal writer. And Rather Be actually started, we were on the subway, and he just had his laptop open okay. um, on, on his knee and just wrote that riff. Okay. literally on the um, keyboard. I could see him typing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then he play, gave me headphones um, on the train, and I heard it, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then we decided to make it into the violin and cello mm -hmm. riff. And that's kind of how that started. And then we were listening to um, a particular type of UK dance music at the time and wanted to make something in a similar tempo and then the drum beat came next and usually the lyrics come last so we we don't really know when we start out what the lyrical content will be and um i like doing it that way that way around because <laughs> for me the, the the music is always like the core core of the song totally and then i guess where does a song start for you i mean it just it's just constant you sort of hear things in your head yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tiring. <laughs> um, no, it's, been, it's been a bit different with this second album. We've been writing more kind of around the piano, making more kind of... Uh, we've, with, the, with the first album, some of the songs are quite kind of complicated and difficult to kind of strip back and just play as songs. Um, and we'd, we'd, with this new album, it's kind of... It feels like some of them are more kind of song, songy, if you know what I mean, just more like, yeah. But um, another thing that is perhaps interesting about our process is that we make um, all of our own music videos ourselves. I was going to ask you about that. You guys actually have a production company yeah. at this point to do music videos for yourself and other artists, correct? Yeah, but we haven't really had much time to do it for other artists yet. But um, the fact that we do that means that sometimes the visual ideas that we have come 
before the music and then we write the music around that. Right. So it's kind of like making little films and then kind of sound tracking it. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Um, or we like think of the visual ideas at the same time as the music and they both kind of inform each other. Has it always been like that? Do you guys have ambitions to direct larger features like short films with music or television, anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, Grace, I wonder what it's like being in a trio in which two of the members are siblings. When they get in a fight, do you just head to the end of the bus? Do you avoid them? How does it kind of all work in that way? <laughs> um, they don't actually fight ever, or I've never witnessed it. Um, yeah, I've always been really impressed by the kind of mutual respect they have for each other. Yeah, it's, it's us that fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we fight. These two right here. <laughs> Every other sibling band is wondering how you and your brother yeah. get along. No, Luke's like very, he's very calm and chilled, and yeah, he just... Um, we just mentioned, obviously, that you didn't have a singer, and obviously that has led you to partner with some amazing people, Jess Glynn, Lizzo, Marino from Marino and the Diamonds. Um, on the new singles, we've got Sean Paul. I wonder, um, like, when we're heading into the second album, who else are you working with? Can you share any names of people you're partnering with? Um, we've been writing with a load of amazing singers and they're all so different from each other. Like we've been doing stuff with Zara Larson awesome. and Elton John. Um, and yeah, I, I guess most most people would like to keep a secret because uh, it's nice, I think, for the fans when it just comes out right. and it's like, wow. What is it like to say, you know, we can ask Elton John to be on a song though? Like <laughs> just two years ago, that was definitely not something you were thinking. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite weird. It's very weird, but um, yeah, he's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I don't know. It's 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 quite unreal. Yeah, that we're in that position. Um, yeah, we met him at a party. Okay. Um, it was the Ivan Novello Awards in London, and he he was at a table a few a few tables down, and we just went over to just to say hello, and and actually at that time Jack had been listening to one of his early albums um, loads on the tour bus and it was just a real coincidence that we bumped into him at that time and he sang Rather Be to us and we were really no way. <laughs> surprised that he even knew it and yeah. um, so then we, we just asked if right. we want to get in the studio and it was a crazy feeling when he said yes. <laughs> What has been the most surprising person, you know, when you're at sort of industry parties or events, when you meet somebody like an Elton John, like who's been the most surprising fan that you've encountered? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe him? Yeah. We don't meet that many fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Um, when you guys are searching for a vocalist, once you've gotten the track built out and you now need to work on lyrics and get a singer, what are you looking for? I mean, how do you sort of pick who to approach? Well, with Rather Be, we had recorded it and found that uh, it worked really well with, with, with the recording that we had, but then we wanted it to have like a huge power like we're very interested in like soul female right. power and um and then when we heard Jess Glynn's voice we thought it would work really well with her and then it, and then it did but it completely depends on the song what we're looking for like um Sean Paul we've always wanted right. to work with that's like been a dream um growing up right and so I guess he's always been in the back of our minds. Right. <laughs> um, he's having a bit of a comeback here. You know, he was featured on Sia's Cheap Thrills, which was one, number one here. What is it like in the studio with Sean Paul or to work with him? Oh, he's amazing. Um, he, he kind of highlighted to me um, a problem that he has with, like, younger producers or pr producers who have just started working with him. and Because and ev everything that he did, I just thought sounded amazing. Right. You know, like... And um, yeah, he was basically just saying, no, come on. I, I, just because it's me saying it doesn't mean right. it's good. You've got to. You can gotta still keep, mess yeah, with my vocal. Gotta a little keep bit. Go, we've got to keep going. Like he was so kind of. Um, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is great. This is great. And, right. And he's like, is it really? Come on, let's really get to it. And 
right. he was constantly pushing. It's probably a good lesson for you guys too, though, to sort of like figure out how to push people who are already so well established and already so well trained. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so so far off the second collection, we have heard Tears and Rockabye. Um, what else can you tell us about the sounds you guys are working with, or any themes that are emerging? Themes. Um, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of like breakup tracks on the album. Um, in terms of other themes, I don't know. Yeah, the lyrical themes are are quite different in that way because the first album was all all the songs are quite joyful and playful. And on this album, I think the music is still like that, but lyrically, they're kind of deeper issues in some of the songs. And um, yeah, some involving like pain and right. heartbreak. And Where does that come from? Do you guys, is that, is that things that you guys recently went through and then you well, take them to the vocalist and you guys write together? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's more coincidence because we're ri writing with a lot of different um, vocalists and, our, you know, we tend to stick with the, m the musical side of things. We work in a way, the, the way I kind of in input in terms of lyrics is, is kind of more like an editor and mm -hmm. kind of making sure that, that, I don't know, like kind of guiding the, the, guiding the lyrical content. Um, in some cases, we've we've been writing with a guy called Sam Romans, um, who's one of my really good friends, and we wrote Tears together. And for some reason, he's he's like a happily married guy right. with two kids, but he's constantly writing breakup songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loves it. <laughs> I love that. Um, so Tears is one of the biggest selling singles of the year in the UK. Rockabye just went number one. You guys have found enormous success pretty quickly. Do you feel like there was a hole in pop music that you guys are filling, or what about it is working so well? I don't know, because Tears and Rockabye are quite, I think they're quite different sound worlds. They're very different kind of, I guess Tears is like, Tears is quite a weird song. It's kind of difficult to say what genre it is, if it has one. People have said it's kind of like a future, I will survive. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And Rockabye, people have said like, oh, it's come from nowhere, that kind of dance hall right. uh, sound, but we've done a few things like that before, but maybe have just haven't been quite that known, like our track Come Over with Stylo. Um, yeah, I think um, dance hall music is uh, a massive part of our lives. It's <laughs> probably like right. what I listen to most. Um, I think if Grace had her way, it would be just a dance hall album. Just a dance hall yeah. album. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, album number three. Yeah, but then coincidentally, at the moment in the UK, dance hall is mm -hmm. having a lot of success, and here as well. Right. Um, so I'm very happy about that. When did you first get into that? I mean, you were playing classical instruments, string instruments, your whole life. Yeah, um, but I've I've always been into loads of different kinds of music. The first um, album I bought was Ace of Bass, okay. which is... A great choice. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that, that the style of music that they kind of pioneered, I still really love, like that mix of reggae with a kind of super sweet Swedish right. female vocal. And um, yeah, I guess that m might have influenced the making of this song, um, Rockabye. Um, but yeah, and then I've been into like a lot of dance music in my, in my teens awesome. as well. Um, can you tell us where you guys are in the album process, how many songs we're in, if it's all the way finished? It's, there's been quite a bit of um, pressure from the label to, to get singles done. <laughs> right. I don't know if that's, um, if it's okay to talk about that, but um, at the moment it just feels like single, single, single. Right. Um, but I think now we've got Rockabye out, maybe that pressure will reduce slightly. I think we, we know our next single as well, so beyond that we can just... Do you want to give us any hints? What, the next one? Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> so are we looking at maybe like 2017 and just touring for the rest of this year? I yeah. think so, yeah. yeah that maybe. 
I mean, it's not much touring we're doing now. It's just two shows, three shows in the US and then um, chilling. So you guys are playing here tonight, obviously, and then you go to LA, you're playing yeah. there. Do you guys have a city in America that feels like your home base, like your home crowd? I'd say probably New York. I love Chicago. Okay. Like <laughs> the good. shows we've done there have been really, really special. And uh, Boston as well it was crazy. Um, we were just talking, you guys have mixed things up a bit for the live show. You've got some new band members. Obviously, you actually had a recent band member depart. Yeah. What has been the adjustment period of like different numbers of people and different people on stage? It's It's been... Um quite crazy the last month actually because it's it almost feels like on stage like a completely different band but it's just been so nice the last few days it locking in and yeah they're such lovely guys um we've with neil leaving we've kind of mm -hmm. decided to go back to the original format and have more strings instead of just because before it was just grace and neil uh and we're pushing it more towards a quartet that's awesome. Um, um, yeah. We're going to take some time for some audience questions now. I think they are. Hi. Uh, thanks so much for coming, by the way. Um, so I saw you a couple years ago at Firefly, and my question for you would be, um, what's your favorite place to perform festivals or regular concert venues? Um, oh, good question. Good question. What, in the US or in the world? Let's go in the world. <laughs> in the world. I think concert venues, actually, for me, is better because... Um, you can really connect your own fans because um, they're all there to see you. As festivals, you never really know who's going to turn up. And um, actually, in America, festivals are much more enjoyable than at home where it's muddy and wet and you kind of yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, thank you for being Hello. here. Uh, can you explain the concept of the artwork shown on the screen right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's actually. Uh, Luke, Luke's eyeball, um, and it's a kind of deconstructed version of our logo. I guess the city is kind of like representing the hardships, and it's a, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a baby. Yeah, the song is about um, a mother and her, a single mother and her child, and her plight to give, do everything she can to give him a better life than her own. And um, this artwork was made by an artist called Rita Zimmerman, um, a collage artist who we've been following for a while, and she came up with this. That's awesome. And that's all the time we've got for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Thank you.